Good morning class, welcome back to uh, the next lesson. And as I said, if you take a quick look at the, um, uh, the learner guide for next week, uh, this is the next topic there. And as I said to you on the first day in the introduction, that if you've done all the frames I asked you to solve your frames, um, this is it. Okay. It's, it's the same as what we've done last time. It's going to be more of the same thing, basically. Okay. So I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm going to take a frame. I'm going to work through the reactions, explain things again, like you know. Take one or two or three um, joints, solve the joints. That means uh, find this, the magnitude of the forces in the joints, uh, in the members. And then also find whether the members are in tension or compression. Okay. And all of that won't be new. The only thing that will be new will actually be what the frame looks like or what you call the configuration of the members in the truss of the frame. Okay, so let's do that. All right, people, there's the first frame there. Um, uh, um, I mean, if, I, if it's going to be a test, the first part to this test would be uh, determine whether this frame is statically determinant or not. Okay. And if you cast your mind back, we, there were two formula, one for frames without support reactions and a, one for a formula for frames with support reactions. Okay, so you use the correct one and you test whether a static determinant, if it is perfect, it is static determinant. If it's hypostatic, that means if it's containing redundant members or if it's a substatic, that means it's containing members, one or two few members, then it is not statically determinant. Okay. But for this, we're just doing solving the frames, right? There we have a frame. First part is it determine support reactions, right? And as usual, before we start, we draw in the reactions and assume the directions, right? Let me do this over here. Um, let me do that and that, okay? Right. So there we have a pin joint, and the pin joint has got two possible reactions. So I'm going to assume there's going to be a horizontal reaction doing something like so. And there's going to be a vertical reaction doing something like so. And I'm going to, and there's a roller there. So that means the roller is free to move in the vertical plane. So it is going to have one possible reaction in the horizontal plane, sitting like that over there. And I'm going to name them accordingly. I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this HB. And I'm going to call this VB. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to call this HA, like so. Okay, now people, if you cast your mind back, a number of you um, said that there's a VA. VA here does not exist. And then you do calculation in the test, and I just put a big cross in there, and I say VA doesn't exist. Okay, because there's no reaction this way. Why is there no reaction? Because this Remember here, this, this roller, this joint, is free to move there, so there's no reaction. Nothing is holding it there. There's only reaction the other way. So there's HP, VB, HA. I'm assuming left, I'm assuming upwards, I'm assuming to the right. Right. So let's take moments to find the reactions. And what did I normally say? We take moments about the pin joint. Why don't we take moments about the pin joint first? Because when we take moments about this joint here, we cancel out the effect of those two and find that one. Okay. If I take moments about this point here, I'm going to have those two possible reactions in one equation, which could be unsolvable. So I'm going to start there. So I'm going to say the sum of the moments about A is equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? Because the whole system is in equilibrium. Right. There's my point of rotation. So about this point, that's going to be minus. Why is it minus? Because it's going to be anti-clockwise with respect to B. So it's minus HA. And what's the leave on for HA? 2.8 meters minus 2.8. Okay. Plus, right. Now notice there, that there is a right angle. That's a right angle. That's a right angle. Now listen to me carefully. You can either, either, um, let me just do this over here. You can either use the vertical and horizontal components of the forces, which I'm drawing in right now. Let 
okay you can either use the components of those forces to take moments about that point or you can use the forces as they are why because that's a right angle that's a right angle that's a right angle that means the length of member bc which is the distance bc is also the same as the lever arm for the 12 kilonewton force okay and because it's acting this way it will be clockwise with respect to b secondly this force here okay member bd is also the lever arm for that force there because that force is acting at right angles through the point of rotation. And then thirdly, member BE is actually the lever arm for the 6 kN force because why? There's a right angle there and that force is acting at right angles through the point of rotation, the point of rotation all being at B. Okay, so you do the maths and you work out the length BC, CD and DE. And notice there that the distance from there to that point is 1.6 and from there to there is 2 times 1.6 and from there to there is 1.6 times 3 so that means the distance bc so if you take the geometry okay bc is equal to cd is equal to de okay and if you do the maths you will see there that bc okay uh, let me just change the color here BC is actually 1.85 meters and CD is also 1.85 meters and DE is also 1.85 meters. Okay. Don't believe me? Stop the video, go back and work it out to see if you get the same answer. Okay. I could have made a mistake, so go back, stop and check me out. Ryan, so. Let me change the color here. Right, so I'm taking moments about B. So this is minus HA times 2.8 plus. Why plus? Because that's clockwise about B, so it's plus 12. Oh, it's still red. Plus 12 times 1.85 plus 12. This one here, 12. Right. 12 times 2 times 1.85, we can work it out, but I'm going to say 2 times that, 2 times 1.85, plus 6 times 3 of 1.85, okay, are there any more, um, I don't think so, so it's equal to 0, okay, so therefore, we make HA the subject of the formula, and do your calculation, don't believe me, stop the video and do it yourself. And for HA, if I do my calculation, HA is equal to 35.68 kilonewtons. Okay, like that over there. And because I get a positive answer, what does it mean? It means that my assumption that HA is going to the right is in fact correct. Okay, so HA, equal to 35.68 kilonewtons right so there we go what's the next thing we do now as i said in applied mechanics we can either go to the next point here and take moments about ha to find hp but we're not going to do that because we're getting pretty smart now so now i'm going to sum horizontals first okay so i'm going to say the sum of the horizontals is equal to zero. I'm going to leave it in the red bar. Okay. Right, people. Now, when we're summing horizontals and summing verticals, we can't use these forces as they are anymore. I can't use the 12, the 12, and the 6. I've got to use their components. Okay. So I'm summing horizontals. How many horizontals do I have? I've got HA plus HA minus HP minus that one minus that one minus that one equal to zero. Okay, right. Are you tuning in? Now, people here, this angle here, what is it equal to? Have you thought about it? Okay, don't believe me, go check it out. That angle inside there, which is the same as that angle inside there, which is the same as that angle inside there, is equal to that angle 
over there. Now, every every time or every year when I teach this, there's always a big debating class. Okay. Don't believe me? Go check it out. And the angle I get from the geometry there, there's a side there, there's a side there. I can get that angle. And that angle is equal to that angle. And the angle I get for that is 30.26 degrees. I'm going to say 30.26 degrees. That angle is side there. Okay. Right. So that component there, and that component there, that component. So that I'm going to start here. That component is equal to 12 cos 32.6 degrees. Okay, I'm going to do it. Right, so what's 12 times 30 cos 0.26 degrees? Okay, don't believe me? Go work at that for yourself. So, as I said there, that is 12 cos 30.26, and I'm going to just write the value in. It is equal to 10.36 kilonewtons. 10.36 kilonewtons. And because that's 12 and that's the same angle, that vertical component is going to be at the same value. Okay. What is that there? Okay. That's 12 cos of that angle. That will be 12 sine of that same angle. So it's 12 times sine of 30.26. And I get 6.05 kilonewtons. I'll say it again. That's 12 sine of that angle there. And because those two forces are the same, the angle is the same, so that component there, the horizontal, is also 6.05 kilonewtons. Okay. Right, people, if that's 12 and 12 and that's 6, that means these two components here must be exactly half of those. So this vertical one is half of 10.36, which is 5.18. 5.18 kilonewtons. It's getting tight here. And this is going to be half of 6.05, which is 3.02. 3.02 kilonewtons. Right. I'm now ready to sum horizontal forces. I'm going to change the color. Right. I'm summing horizontals. So HA, 35.68. 35.68 is positive because it's going in the right direction. Minus HP. Why is it minus? Because it's going left. So it's minus HP, minus 6.05, minus 6.05. Let me make this nicer rather, okay? Let me do that. Minus 3.02, minus... 3.02. Do we have all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, we have. Is equal to 0. Okay. Right. Therefore, we can make HP the subject of the formula. And we get HP equal to 20.20. I'm going. Newton. And because the answer is positive, what does it mean? It means that our assumption that HP is going left is in fact correct. A lot of people still seem to think that if it's positive here, it's going to the right now. That sign, the signs there, is for direction. The sign here is for correctness of assumption. Okay? Because the answer is positive, it means that my assumption that HP is going left is in fact correct. So it's going left. Okay? Right. I'm going to sum vertical forces. Uh, let me just do this here. Oops, sorry. Um... Let me make it orange. Right, I'm going to say the sum of the vertical forces is equal to zero. Right, how many vertical forces do we have? We've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Plus, minus, minus, minus equal to zero. So I've got plus VB. I've got minus 10.36. Minus another 10.36 minus 5.18 is equal to 0. 
Okay, and like VB the subject of the formula. And I get 25.9 or 25.9 of kilonewton. And the answer is positive. What does it mean? It means that my assumption that VB is going up is in fact correct. So VB is equal to 25.90. And HP is equal to 20.5. I'm going to leave it at kilonewtons. For, oh, I'm going to put it in rather. I leave the units out. Okay. Hi, people. So there we go. I've taken moments about B to find HA. We found it to be 35.68 to the right. Okay. I've summed horizontals. And then I found HB is 20.5 kilonewtons to the left. I've written it in because... And to some of you, when I marked your exams last semester, you leave this out, and when you go to this joint day, you leave that out. You can't leave it out. These forces here will affect these two members, members BC and members BA. If you leave it out, or if you get it wrong, you will get the wrong forces in members BC and BA. That's a revision, okay? And then I went to some vertical forces, and I found VB to be 25.9 kilonewtons, and it's going up, it's there. Okay, people, so that's the first part of the question done. Solving for your action, that's it over there. Okay, I will, in the next lesson, I'll start at joint B. And what, if you remember the rules, what does the rule say? Start at a joint where there's not more than two unknowns. So can I start there? No, I can't, because B, A, A, C, and A, F will be an unknown. So can't start there. Can I start at B? Yes, I can, because B, C, and B, A are unknowns. Can I start at joint E? Yes, I can, because only D, E, and F are unknowns. Can I start there? No, I can't start there. I can't start there. I can't start there. I can't start there. I can start at that joint. Where the joint? So I'm going to start at that joint. So B, C, and B, A. And of course, then I'm going to go to joint A. Why can I? It's because B, A solve, and now all I need to do is solve A, C, and A, F and so on and so on. Okay, I shall see you in the next video.